Hi you guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the Block and I am here with another Healthy House tip to help you guys create an indoor environment that supports your immune system and that supports your overall health and wellness. Um, this week I'm bringing it back to kids. That is kind of my why in um, creating a healthy house. and. We're going to talk about the playroom or your play space in your house. Um, I'm talking about more than just the toys. We're kind of talking about that environment um, and how to create a space that is as toxin free as possible. Um, one that supports imaginative play, one that um, kind of fosters creativity and ingenuity. Um, now, I'm just a mom. I have three kids of my own. Two are a little, two girls are a little older. Um, I've got a nine year old and a six year old, and I have a beautiful eight month old. So we are just kind of starting this really fun playtime that's coming up for him. Um, but I've gone through it with my girls. And so I'm sharing with you some of the resources that um, I have found useful as a parent in creating what I like to call um, an open ended play area. And um, my girls really loved this idea. They still love it, actually. They like to be extra creative with what they're playing with. Um, we don't do a ton of toys, necessarily. Um, we kind of use what we have around, and we do a lot of open-ended um, objects, like cardboard, um, fabrics, things like that. So um, this week, I'm gonna walk you through um, a series of slides we're going to talk about the toxins that are in typical play areas. Um, we're going to talk about components of a healthy play area from the flooring to the furniture. Um, I have some ideas for you to create um, a beautiful space for your kids that doesn't contain toxins, plastics, things like that. Um, if you are more of the type of person who wants to read the blog post and see the links and the studies that I'm going to be referencing, I would encourage you to go to the blog post link that is in my description. Um, it'll have everything linked for you. If I reference a study or I make a claim, there's a link to go with it. So you can see all of those. And if you're kind of like me and want to like learn even more, um, you can read those studies. Um, otherwise, the rest of the blog post will be um, kind of broken down in really bite-sized pieces through these slides. And it's just a quick, easy way to get the information that I'm sharing this week about play spaces. So let's get started. Okie dokie, let's um, take a look at playroom ideas and play space ideas if you don't have a full room. Um, I am super excited about this because this is right up my alley um, for where we are in our um, parenting life right now. So let's take a look at some of the components of a toxin-free play space um, to kind of just get you started. So first let's look at flooring. Um, Toxic flooring would be um, flooring that is like synthetic carpet. A lot of that contains flame retardants and phthalates. Um, these toxins are known hormone disruptors and affect development in children as well as contribute contribute to um, reproductive toxicity and neurological toxicity in both kids and adults. So with kids spending so much time on the floor playing and having poor hand-to-mouth habits, flooring choices are especially important for them. Um, if you have the option to put down a rug on either carpet, um, if you want to protect them from the carpet or on a smooth like flooring surface, you can improve the space by creating a low toxin or toxin free surface that your kids will be playing on. Um, I linked one of my favorite rugs from Organic Weave in this week's blog post for you. They are the only certified, um, GOTS certified organic area rug um, handmade company. Um, they're amazing. So, so next let's take a look at storage. Um, so Avoiding plastic wherever you can is key when you're creating a toxin-free space. Um, plastic contains toxins that can both be off-gassed and tiny particles that can end up in the air. Um, the toxins in plastics play a huge role in hormone disruption, especially in little kids. And this hormone disruption can trickle down to autoimmune disorders, reproductive issues, immune suppression, and thyroid issues. Um, you want to opt for natural materials for toy and craft storage in your play space. And this can um, mean finding metal, cloth baskets, natural fibers like um, rattan or sisal, um, jute, wooden storage, um, just anything that's not plastic. And I'm sharing um, a few of those on the blog this week. 
Next, let's take a look at textiles. So this is like pillows, drapes, upholstered furniture. A lot of them are treated with formaldehyde and PFOAs and PFCs in order to make the fabric stain resistant and more water repellent. Um, the fabric from these textiles becomes a part of our dust through like friction of use and washing. And the tiny little particles that contain flame retardants, formaldehyde, pesticides, and other VOCs actually end up in our air and dust. Um, once these toxins are in the air, we have the ability to ingest them and inhale them, burdening our bodies with immune system suppressors and hormone disruptors. Um, find textiles that are certified organic, got certified. Um, the <clears throat> OEKO Tex 100 standard is great when you're looking at pillows, drapes, and upholstery. Um, and then finally, let's take a look at some furniture options. So toxin-free furniture can be really difficult to find at an affordable price. Um, I like to help families find wooden, natural wooden pieces that they can either finish themselves or opt for like a low toxin furniture that's mostly toxin-free. Um, the nice thing about a playroom is that you can create a cozy space with not a whole lot of furniture needed. Um, the biggest thing you want to avoid when it comes to furniture is plastic, plywood, particle board, MDF. Um, they're inexpensive, but they're also the things that contain the most, um, the most uh, toxins like formaldehyde and PVC. So we want to avoid those if we can. Um, and then let's take a look at some ideas for open-ended play. Um, this is a great uh, way to make your playroom um, a, a place to foster creativity um, and imagination for your kids. So the first is healthy art supplies. Um, I kind of talked this week in my blog post about a uh, light bulb lab concept, which is basically taking cardboard, recyclable items, buttons, tape, fabric, whatever you want, um, and creating whatever you want. There's no mistakes. There's nothing wrong. Um, my daughter's kindergarten teacher came up with this idea and um, both my girls have just loved it. Um, so you can put together your own little light bulb lab um, that I talk about in this week's blog post. Second is to avoid clutter. So we want to um, not overwhelm our kids. And the fact of the matter is that when there are too many choices, they do get overwhelmed. So this is especially true of toys and items in their play space. And so having a bin to put um, toys away so they're not in view is a great way to do it. You can also rotate out um, different toys uh, when they're not playing with them. Um, another added benefit is there's less to clean up. Um, and the longer that a child can focus on one toy, it'll um, kind of train them to have their attention on something longer. Um, and it's great for their brain development. The next thing I want to talk about is a yes space. So having a space, um, that you do not have to hover over your kids to ensure their safety. So it's a space where they can kind of do whatever they want. They'll be safe. Um, you don't have to worry. I mean, you can be in a general vicinity, but you don't have to be hovering over them. So it really promotes independent play and it's a great way to get their creative minds going. Um, and I have a link to um, a favorite um, go-to resource of mine, Janet Lansbury. She has um, a really um, great blog post where she shares different ideas for a yes space in your house. Um, and then the last thing is open-ended toys. So essentially the idea is to give your toys, your kids toys that could be used in many different ways, as opposed to just like one intended function. An example might be like, if you give your child a container filled with like wooden discs, those wooden discs could be money, cucumber slices. They could be stepping stones um, for their dolls. Whereas like if you give your child a play food cucumber, it's probably always just going to be a cucumber. So you're kind of, um, you're giving them, um, toys that will foster creativity and ingenuity, um, as they're allowed to be imaginative with their toys instead of just playing with it as it's intended. Um, and so let's look at some habits for your play area. So first and foremost this is a big one. We want to wash those plush toys. Um, so I know it's hard. We have a lot of plush toys in our house and you can't wash all of them and you can't keep them all clean, but do your best. So the first is the first option I would say is to wash and dry um, them if possible. If you cannot do that, then maybe just add the toys to the dryer and run on the hottest cycle for like 20 to 30 minutes. If that's not an option, the last thing you could do is put them in the freezer for about 60 minutes um, to kill any dust mites and then give them like a good shake afterwards. 
Second thing you want to do is air out your kid's space, um, especially if your playroom is in the attic or the basement. You'll want to make sure that you're getting fresh air inside on a regular basis. Um, heavier toxins like radon can pool in lower levels of homes and create an unsafe area for kids to spend time. Um, VOCs can also become concentrated and um, they're usually in areas that have poor ventilation. Um, just because there's not fresh air coming in. So you can easily air out a room by opening the windows. You can turn on a ceiling fan or an HVAC fan, HVAC fan, um, get the air moving in the space. Next thing is clean, but clean toxin free. So don't over sanitize. Um, Sterile spaces can actually be as harmful to kids' immune systems as dirty spaces. Um, Kids need to be exposed to like a diversity of microbes to actually protect them from future illnesses. Um, But again, like we talked about a couple weeks ago, we also want to get dust out of our home because it does harbor toxins and pesticides that can greatly affect the health of kids who come in contact with it. So... Um, dust when you can, vacuum when you can, use a toxin-free multi-purpose cleaner, but don't over sanitize. And then the last thing is to limit plastic if you can. I, I think this one's easier said than done, um, but be intentional and don't bring in plastic toys if you can help it. And when you're done with a plastic toy, if your kids are kind of losing interest, get rid of it, donate it. Um, I don't think you have to like throw away all of your toys. Um, but I think limiting plastic where you can is really a great option. And I'm actually going to be sharing with you some non-plastic toy ideas here next. So, um, these are my, my playroom picks. Um, again, kids are absolutely resilient, but pound for pound kids are coming into contact with vastly more chemicals and toxins than we are as adults. And it's our job to protect them. So, um, up here I'm, I have these all linked in the blog post, but I've got an organic, um, and natural wood tent that is great for a play space. I've got some vegan play scarves and that rug is an organic weave, um, got certified rug for your space. Um, all really healthy ideas. And then um, I'm also sharing with you an eco-friendly natural wood table, um, extremely low VOCs. I've got um, a, an or, a natural paper roll um, that you could put out as organic paper. And then you can use organic pencils or crayons. Um, I also have paints. If you're looking for those, let me know that you can use on those, um, on the paper. And then the stacking cups are also, um, a natural material. Um, they're made in Denmark. It's a really great option for little hands. And then that basket, um, is natural, uh, fabric and cotton to store all of your toys in, um, keep them out of sight again. And then I love these eco bricks. Um, they're from crate and barrel. They're essentially Legos, but wood. Um, and then the wooden magnetic blocks are also great for kiddos. Thank you so much for hanging around, you guys. I am so glad that you're here. Um, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments or there's anything that um, you will be doing that you want to share with me, I would love for you to leave a comment or you can send me an email um, that is on my blog. Otherwise, I will be here again next week with a healthy house tip on creating a space that supports your health and wellness. Until then, be well.